Hello all sentient beings and welcome to the Transmissions Podcast where we talk all Hasbro, Takara, and third party Transformers! On this episode of Transmissions, we are joined by Epic Suicide as we check out how the Toy Robot Magazine Kickstarter is coming along. We look at Transformers Earthrise Deluxe, Trailbreaker, and Sunstreaker, and Jada Toys shows off their Nano Transformers. Today is Wednesday, March 4th, 2020, and this is episode 371 of Transmissions. Welcome to Transmissions, the podcast that voted for Megatron on Super Tuesday. I'm your host, Charles, a.k.a. Big C, and I'm joined by the excellent Transmissions team. Yusuf, better known as Yoshi. Yo! Jeremy, a.k.a. Yakko. Hey, who is that? (laughs) Right. (laughs) And Daryl, the Cybertronian Beast. Hey, happy new year, Yoshi. How's it going? <laughs> Let's talk Transformers. All right. And we have a very special guest joining us. Uh, Daryl, would you please introduce our special guest? Yeah. Uh, you may remember this person from uh, a previous podcast called Transmissions. It's Yoshi. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, I still do all the intros. <laughs> That's true. Uh, no, I'm kidding. The our guest today is uh, is Epic Suicide, and you might remember her from a previous Transmissions Extra that I did with uh, her, and we talked about all the things that she's into collecting wise and her modeling and all kinds of cool stuff. And it was about an hour or so. Go back and check it out if you haven't yet. So, uh, welcome back to the show, Epic. Hello. Thanks for having me. No problem. All right, and uh, Epic. Uh... You've already uh, gotten set up and everything, so uh, settle back. It's going to be a long evening. Sorry. All right. No worries. <laughs> uh, but uh, we're we're going to have fun. So. Okay. Sounds good. Talk lots of toys, comics, media, all that stuff. All right. Uh, so we start off the show, as always, by thanking our Donatrions, those lovely people who give us money on Patreon and PayPal. Thank you so much for continuing to support the show and helping us to keep it going. And if you are not already a Donatrion and would like to join up, just go to transmissionspodcast.com slash support. And that's where you can uh, sign up, uh, either on Patreon or PayPal, and that'll help the show out. You can also help us out if you buy merchandise from our Tee Public store, and that is at transmissionspodcast.com slash shop. And you can get lots of uh, shirts, uh, other mugs, items with Transmissions logos on them. You can also buy number, lots. Hey, n- n- number one, Derek wanted to know when we'd be offering body <laughs> pillows. I'll leave that up to you, Yoshi. You could, I, he'll, he asked for you your body pillow specifically. So The double-sided uh, ones, of that. course. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> wow. Right off the bat. She's she's she come out swinging. <laughs> Love it. Yeah, so check out Yoshi's body pillow at transmissionspodcast.com slash shop. Oh, now the fan mail's coming in. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, but I'm not sure if T Public is doing body pillows just yet. Uh you can also check out our friend of the show, K Girl. Her shop is at tpublic.com slash user slash superstar K. She just has art, art designs and shirts there. That's all. <laughs> I would like to say someone used our our link to buy something something like on T Public that was not ours. But thank you for whoever did that. That was still awesome. Yeah, whatever you buy, as long as you use our link, that helps the show out. So thank you. All right, another perk of being a Transmissions Donatrion is that you are automatically entered into our monthly Toy Hacks ten dollar gift code drawing, and we are going to do the February drawing tonight. Uh, so we've got lots of people uh, signed up. Uh, Jeremy, are you ready? As your is your lovely assistant ready to help us out? Computer, are you ready? I'm ready when you are. All right. So if we could have a number between one and eighty-seven. Computer, give me a random number between one and eighty-seven. Your random number between one and eighty-seven is fifty-nine. That one's not me. <laughs> <laughs> Tom B. Long. <laughs> nice. <laughs> All right. 
Congratulations, well, Tom. He's no longer an employee of IDW. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Tom B. Long, congratulations. You are getting a $10 gift code, so you can get some stickers to apply to your Transformers. Or six-foot-long Millennium Falcons. <laughs> <laughs> Tom B. Long, longtime letterer of Transformers IDW Comics, recently moved on to greener pastures, but we miss him. Congratulations. Longtime supporter of Transmissions, too. All right. Uh, last thing before we get into the toy talk Empire of Rust, episode 18, is out right now. How high does the metal kite fly? Uh, so this is our Transformers RPG live podcast done by our editor and producer, Mike Ordway, and his team. So uh, check it out at transmissionspodcast.com slash rust. Uh, episode 18 was just released this Monday, so it uh, should already be in your feeds if you're, if, you got, if you're subscribed to the main Transmissions feed. So check it out. All right. We've got toys to talk about, so let's start it off. All right, and first up this week, I wanted to give a quick update on our friends over at Toy Robot Magazine who are running their edited or relaunched Kickstarter. And uh, this one here is, uh, you know, we talked about it a bit. We've got a new uh, Kickstarter goal, and they are closing in on their uh, on the end of their, their Kickstarter time period. They were looking for... What is it here? $20,000 US. There is seven days left, and they are still a little short. They're at $7,861 pledged. Um, I mean, they've got 134 backers right now, which is, you know, that's nothing to shy away from. But let's get some let's get some more uh, people uh, be- backing them here. Uh, seven days to go. Remember, this is for, you know, like... Full color magazines coming to your house, um, talking about Transformers and other robots. Uh, it'll be really, really cool. So take a look. If it's something that you're interested in, now's the time to start to, to start thinking about backing it. Okay. Um, but and, yeah. And Daryl, uh, when this show is up, there'll only be four days left. That's right. So, so. even less. <laughs> act act now. Done. Did you just do Good. it? As you were talking. <laughs> All right. I'm going to refresh the page. <laughs> oh, wow. You 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 pledged 10 grand? <laughs> what? <laughs> no. Oh, okay. No. So, the, yeah, if you're looking at that, we've got links in the show notes. Uh, go take a look. And uh, yeah, they've got it. They've they've re-edited all the stuff. There's even deals for people outside of the U.S. So if you're in Canada or if you're overseas uh, and you're looking and you're like shipping's gonna be a bitch, uh, I, they've they've figured that out and they're they're you know they've got it down to a pretty reasonable price. Um, so yeah, this is a uh, uh, what is it? They're they've advertising it here on the on the page that it's going to be only about eight eighty three per issue within the U.S. That's I mean. Yeah, for a, a regular magazine, that's a, a little high, but not not in like crazy high. That's just a little bit more than what you usually would pay. But these guys are just starting. Like that's really quite good, you know, for a, a, a startup here. And uh, I'm, you know, I'm pretty impressed with this, you know. So yeah, let's uh, let's help them out. Uh, my actual toy topic, though is finishing off um, something that I've personally been following just to see how it would look and all that stuff. This is Devil Savior and their prototype images for Paranoider and Bomber. This is DS-701A and DS-701B. These are Revenge of the Fallen Hightower and Yellow Bulldozer. I guess they stopped being creative after Hightower. Um, but yeah, so they've got a couple, a couple, uh, of their, these are their last guys. Cause, uh, cause the devil savior devastator is only seven figures. Whereas the, uh, studio series is eight. So these are the last two figures needed for that. Um, they call them troublemaker is their devastator name. And, uh, this one is a little, well, it, it works in two modes. 
it works for its alt mode, which is a bulldozer, and it works in the arm mode, which uh, is is pretty crazy, you know. But if you want to make the you know the robot mode, it's it's weird. It's a three legged uh, robot mode. Uh, it's got chains, which is kind of cool. Um, but uh, the uh, I think the real winner here is just you know they actually make the the arm mode of this thing uh, look pretty damn cool. Um, it does combine with with um, well high tower and yellow bulldozer combine in their alt modes to to form some kind of big big construction vehicle. But uh, but yeah, the real the real meat and potatoes of this is the actual arm mode of their devastator, which is called troublemaker. Um, I do have another topic, which is literally just the fully combined image of their devastator. Uh, called Troublemaker, like I said, and most of it's in prototype. Um, you'll notice if you look at the pictures of their Devastator, uh, he has testicles. Um, <laughs> so they are going for full on screen accuracy here, and uh, I believe they've achieved it. Um, but uh, again, this is this is a third party company. Their first outing over at Devil, Devil Savior. Um, We've been following all of these figures for, as they've been coming out, and they look fantastic. Um, let's uh, let's throw it over to our guest, Epic. What do you what do you think of this? You know the the full figure of of Troublemaker here, and the uh, the 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 bits and pieces that they just put out the uh, the High Tower and Yellow Bulldozer. Yeah, I mean, I think it's neat that they were able to actually, like, create these and stuff, but I have personally always hated this rendition of Devastator. I just think it's so mangled looking. I mean, it's super cool that, like I said, that the way they got everything to connect and transform and stuff is super awesome, but, yeah, I just I just have no desire to get this guy or care about him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, that's that's perfectly, you know, okay feeling. A lot of people share it. Yeah, I think I kind of feel the same way. It's just it's it's a devastator for me, so I kind of feel I I got to chase it down. Not this particular company one. I'm getting the Studio Series one, but the uh but the fact that it's it's just it's a gigantic figure that's being made mm-hmm. in Studio Series and that's just 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 crazy, right? Yeah. Yeah. No. For sure. Uh, Charles, uh, what's your thoughts on Troublemaker here in his completed state? Epic stole my answer. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, uh, we, we've talked about this before. I, I'm also not a fan of this Devastator. Um, uh, it, it does, I mean, I, I can appreciate the the engineering skill it takes to pull this off. I mm-hmm. mean, the the movie design is pretty horrendous so to actually get that in physical form is is difficult uh mm-hmm. i do like the little the little chains uh i guess that's cool you know that they're, they're it you know those are little little pieces little touches that you won't get in like a mainline hasbro figure because those are you know safety hazards for little kids and things so it's nice to to add those things and yeah Testicles, woohoo, great. <laughs> Yay for movie accuracy. Uh, Mike, Mike, I, I will need a copy of him saying that. <laughs> but yeah, um, that's fine. Not for me, but all right. for all the movie, all the Revenge of the Fallen fans out there, enjoy. Yoshi, it's been uh, it's been a while since we've gotten your comments on on a lot of this stuff. Um, taking a yeah, look I don't at, know how to podcast anymore. Yeah, it's it's okay, man. Will you stick with me? I'll I'll, I'll walk you through it. It's uh, this is the fully conf- uh, combined form of of Troublemaker, their Devastator. Uh, can you take your eyes off the testicles, or are they just you know are they just drawing drawing you right in? Let's look. If they decided to make the executive decision to release this figure without testicles, the internet would be filled with his testicles just haven't dropped yet jokes. This is <laughs> this is what would have happened. So they were screwed either way, as far as this is concerned. Um, you know what? I'm I, I, to to sound like a broken record and echo everyone. It's it's uh, live action Transformers. I really have no love for these things. Uh, what I will say is for those fans who who are fans of this and are going to get this, 
the red guy being the only completed one, I assume. His paint job is phenomenal. I really like how he looks. They 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 get an A plus for me as far as painting that sucker up. Mm. And uh, I imagine once the other guys are are at a prototype and painted officially, they're also going to look really well and mix in well with the red guy. But uh, mm-hmm. it's just not for me, Daryl. No, no, and that's cool. Uh, there are two figures here that at least two figures that I can t- identify. That are painted up here. You've got their mix master and their scavenger. Uh, mix master being yeah, the but head, they don't right? have they don't have the dirt detail that the, unless I'm just looking at a wrong picture. Or you can really be excused for not being able to differentiate. Yeah, the and that's yeah exactly the, the the mix master is the one with the dirt detail on the on the wheels. Um, uh-huh. But uh, they all they all actually have it. Like there's the caterpillar treads. If you look at the picture of the from him, uh, on his back. You see the uh-huh. caterpillar treads with the dirt detail. Like they've done a lot of paint work on this guy, and that's okay. right. I mean, this is third party. They're going to get a little bit of a more premium, you know, package with it. But mm-hmm. it's uh, it's definitely, um, you know, they do. It looks good. So yeah. But Jeremy, uh, your your hot take on this uh, this big behemoth? Well, look, I want to go back to the actual um, the paranoid and bomber. I'm just okay. The vehicle mode you said looked okay. I have never seen a bulldozer with three sections. It's just, I don't know. I, the The alt mode just doesn't do it for me. Right. Okay. So I I'm, mean, I understand why they had to do yes. it, but it's just. I'm giving them a little bit of creative find, liberties with that because of you can find some other way to hide those middle sections there, but also the chains are going to get twisted together. It's going to get lost. It's I don't know. I just I don't I don't know if I ever remember another figure having an actual chain and how will that affect transformation? Right. Just getting caught. It just seems like it would be more of a pain to deal with in the long run. The combined mode, I, I think. I mean, it it looks screen accurate, so it has that going for it. Uh, like you she said, the paint's great. Uh, it is just it is not a figure I'm in, interested in at all. All right. Well, that was it for me this week. I just had the one uh, real uh, topic or toy that I wanted to talk about, but uh, I'm going to throw it over to Epic. Uh, what did uh, What did you find this week that you wanted to talk about? All right. Uh, I have a very small topic. Uh, Jada or Jada, not sure how they say that. Uh, they at the Toy Fair announced the release of the Transformers Nano Hollywood Rides new packs that they're going to be bringing out in the spring. Um, mm-hmm. They were going to have a G1 pack that'll have the uh, Optimus Prime, Bumblebee, and Starscream, but then also a Last Night pack that'll have Optimus Prime, Hot Rod, and Crosshairs. And then in the fall, they're looking to release another G1 pack with Jazz, Sideswipe, and Jetfire, which I'm pretty excited about that. And then um, another movie pack in the fall as well from the 2007 movie with Ironhide, Barricade, and one other figure. And these guys, I think, are really cool. They're nano and tiny and super sweet and i have i got myself the first pack uh it's the last night three pack that they came out in last year uh but unfortunately my optimus prime who all he's done is sit on a shelf has like already fallen apart so hopefully like i don't know why it would do that i don't know if they'll be better quality or if i just got a crappy one but um i am excited they have a picture of there are Starscream, Bumblebee, and Optimus Prime in here in the package. And then the other ones were just like, they have the photos of them, of what they're thinking of what they'll do for them. But yeah, that was um, just those being announced at Toy Fair. I'm pretty excited and keep an eye out for them. Mm-hmm. How did it fall apart? Uh, like, like the front wheels, there's like the... I think we ended up gluing it back together, but the like plastic part... I don't know, it, like, cracked around where, like, the... Is that a screw? Yeah, that's got, like, a pin holding it in, and the plastic, I guess, just cracked around it, and then the wheel just oh. fell out and stuff. And so it's just really weird because I don't... It's not like I was roughhousing with it. But, yeah, it was pretty <laughs> bum. But it's all glued back together, crazy. and the wheels do still spin, so it's not complete loss. It's just disappointing. So I'm I when I saw this image... My eye immediately went to the the jet fire in the second G one pack because yeah that is just an a gorgeous mold 
and it's caused some controversy over the years because of Har- Harmony Gold hold, holds the license to essentially that image of uh, of that character. So, you know, something must have legally happened to allow them to do this. Yeah. Um, but my other question, you know, that comes to mind is this is Hasbro kind of it's a it's a it's a license that they've given out to to Jada Toys. But doesn't Hasbro own Micro Machines? That's my, you know, that, that was Kaloob. Did they buy Oh yeah. Oh. <laughs> so oh. so yeah, so, so I'm like these glad. are literally just Micro Machines, you know. Why don't you just put them under the Micro Machine name? But, you know, what's Jada Toys? So they may have just, you know, Jada Toys may have just licensed these cars and produced their own Micro Machines, I'm guessing. Well, is is Micro Machines still around? Like I are they still marketing them? Yes. Well, they yeah, they I mean the brand got killed in the early 2000s, but they keep bringing them back for every, you know, if whenever they want to make something this this scale. Maybe they maybe uh they'd rather like just take the license fee and not put any effort into <laughs> make yeah. may, maybe they thought Transformers Micro Machines wouldn't sell like enough to justify making a subline and said just let Jada Toys do it or something. I don't know. Maybe. Oh, and in the chat here, DJ Ronan makes a good point. It looks like it's a picture of the actual toys. Yes. Not the, so not the nano figures. On the- yeah, because I was I was going to mention that too because I'm looking at the Starscream picture, and if, you know you can see through the cockpit window there, and it's got the landing gear and stuff. And on the toy that you can see on the countertop here, the window is just painted yellow and there mm-hmm. seems to be like a little bump on the bottom where the landing gear could be you know so it's it's an edited version but that was all i had we have some news for from flame toys um some pictures for their upcoming sets um starting off with leo prime we have these are just drawn images it's leo convoy he and he's got a cape which Instantly makes a figure more awesome. Uh, he has a sword. I mean, this looks like a, a really nice version of Leo Prime. Uh, more pictures of the Optimus Primal, which you know we saw last week, and I still think looks amazing. Uh, we have the Fallen, which has some orange flame bits. Uh, and that's going to be coming in December. Ultra Magnus IDW version. This is just a white IDW version Optimus Prime. It is not Ultra Magnus. <laughs> From the IDW universe. But it, it's like the white prime, uh, blue fa- face plate. They, that's just literally all they did. Uh, and then a Victory Leo, which uh, combines to form Victory Saber with their Star Saber. So uh, and that's also going to be December. And then Bumblebee Red version. Essentially, I think it's Cliff Jumper. <laughs> but Bumblebee Red version. Uh, in June, and that is all of these. I, I don't know. I'm I'm kind of excited about where they're going with some of these, trying to get some of these obscure Japanese stuff out here. Epic, have you done any of these uh, Flame Toys kits? I have not yet. I do have a handful on my list that I want to get someday for sure. I think they're super awesome. Uh, where... So where are these like this Leo Prime and stuff? Uh, is that did you say those like just Japanese? Yeah, it's from Japanese. I think Beast Wars Second or Beast Wars Neo. I can't remember what series, but they did our our Beast Wars show came over later in Japan, and they did some animated series kind of with the Beast characters, so they could have something to put put out with toys. All right. And I don't, it, Japanese continuity is just it's it's. Instantly. Yeah. No, I think these but. figures are super cool, though. I like that you can take the Star Saber and Victory Leo and combine them. That, to me, is super yeah. sweet. And that, that's what the actual original toys oh, did. Oh, awesome. Daryl, what do you think of these? Uh, I, I I like them. I got to just, you know, I got to pick and choose which ones of these I'm going to get. Uh, the, you know, the Leo Prime is is very cool. And if it actually does come with, like, soft goods, then, you know, that really does, you know, uh, make me want to get it. The 
the Beast Wars, uh, you know, uh, optimal or Optimus Primal is, um, you know, he's he's cool, he's beefy, and he looks awesome. He's just that's not really the the kind of uh, you know shelf of these I want to make. So I'd probably steer away from that. The Ultra Magnus is I have it in Optimus Prime form. Uh, the Fallen is it's I don't know I don't like it that much. Um, and the mm-hmm. Bumblebee <laughs> red version, it's that's I don't know I don't like when they do that. If you're gonna make a cliff jumper, just make a cliff jumper. Um, <laughs> yeah, the head oh, is no. still Bumblebee. Head. Yeah, the um, the the Star Saber and Victory Leo. I wish I had the cash for for the actual mm-hmm. model, like the 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 figure ones here, because I mean the Star Saber is out already. He's like three hundred dollars. The Victory Leo's coming. He's going to be another two fifty, three hundred. Like this thing's stupid expensive to have it. And, and these aren't the model kits. These are just the actual. That's figures. right. So we've got a mixture of both here, right? So you've the the Leo Leo Prime is a as a the model kit. Uh, Optimus Primal is a model kit. Um, IDW Ultra Magnus is a model kit, and Bumblebee Red version is a model kit. And then you got Fallen and uh, Victory Leo as. Uh, they're super expensive, you know. Mm. They're the ones that come put together already. Oh yeah, yeah. and painted and, they, and painted and yeah. very yeah, super awesome and yeah, they're cool. But yeah, they're uh, they're awesome. I love this line. They're they're doing really a lot of cool things. I can't wait what they're to to see what they do next. And I really wish they do a tarn. Yeah, I mean, and they they are re releasing the. Um, the Tarn figure that they put out, but yeah. it's not a model kit. Uh, Yoshi, have you taken a look at any of these? Uh, only since you brought them up. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, what do you think? I mean, you, do you like model kits? Have you? I do like model kits. I don't own any uh, of of in in Transformers form, but uh, I really do like Cliff Jumper here. Uh, and I'm looking at at the pictures of him, and sp- particularly the one with the helicopter attachment. And I can't help but think uh, IDW needs to run with the idea of an Inspector Gadget versus Transformers crossover. Because <laughs> that would just be nuts. He would be a pretender. That would just be nuts. I'd, I'd, I'd read that book. Well, Charles, uh, what are your thoughts on these new images? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think the, the, the Leo Prime or Leo Convoy looks really interesting. Uh, we talked about the Beast, uh, uh, the... Uh, Optimus Primal one last week, and um, the uh, yeah the Fallen I'm not too interested in. I kind of am. I don't understand why. I mean, the Fallen we haven't seen him. I mean, not in this form since Dreamwave. So I wonder who this this is for. <laughs> the Ultra Magnus, yeah, it's just a white Optimus Prime. So. I'd be more interested in, in in like a one that looked like Ultra Magnus. Uh and yeah, Red Bumblebee, yeah. Cliff give me Cliff Jumper, or give me Death. <laughs> yeah, and then the Victory the, the Victory Leo uh Victory Saber. Yeah, that's that's really cool, but yeah, super expensive, so probably not uh not going to be able to get that. But yeah, I mean, I, I think yeah. Flame Toys has has found a really nice niche with their model kits and their uh and their action figures and I think they uh, uh they're a good addition to the overall Transformers universe. So yeah, keep them coming. Yeah. Cool. Well, I have one more thing. Um at C2E2 this past weekend, I got a chance to talk with a rep from Bluefin Toys, which is the distributor. Uh he explained the whole like ownership thing it's like bluefin is owned by um bandai who does the gundam kits and stuff but they distribute flame toys so flame toys is not owned by bandai but they're distributed by a a subsidiary of bandai but we were talking about the um like all the flame toy stuff and i have a short clip here of my interview and then by the time you you hear this, the Donatrions will already have had access to the full interview, and then later on we'll make it available to everybody. But here's the, a short one-minute clip from that interview. 
Um, you just announced the Decepticon Megatron, which is uh, pretty similar to the Autobot one, just with the Decepticon stuff. Yeah, yeah. Some people, uh, they didn't like the fact that he had the Autobot logo. So this version is for everyone out there who likes the old classic version. <laughs> Those people need to read the comics. <laughs> yeah, he, he did become an Autobot. Yeah. It did happen. It is canon, guys. <laughs> um, and, but you also announced a bunch of other figures, um, both the model kits and the just the action figures. Yeah. So we have uh, the Rodimus model kit, uh, which uh, I saw it in person at TF or at, at Toy Fair. It looked really cool. Um, Optimus Primal, which I haven't seen in person yet, but I've seen the photos and they look fantastic. So as a model builder myself, I'm really looking forward to those. Yeah, awesome. yeah Optimus Primal looks like he's ready for anything. He's, um, he's weaponed up. He, he looks amazing, and I, I can't wait to get my hands on it and start painting it and modifying it and everything. Yeah, cool. So um, thanks to David Clark from Bluefin for spending some time with me. He was extremely busy at the show and he did tell me um it will be like in the interview but he's going to be at tf at tf con orlando and a bunch of anime cons um so if you go look for the bluefin booth they will have flame toy stuff there so it's awesome so that is everything i got this week yoshi what do you got all right so uh uh, i got daryl's blessing for this because uh man i wish it was on last week uh, so at the Melbourne Toy Fair, uh, they showed off uh, some. Uh, they showed off the action figures for uh, Earthrise Skylinks, which to me just looks beautiful. Uh, this isn't the first time we've seen this figure. I'm sure you guys talked about it last week when New York Toy Fair was over and all those action figures came out. Uh, I was really shockingly impressed. Uh, by several of them, and I told Charles that I pre-ordered a couple myself because I was that turned on by them. Uh, the rest of the figures that I was interested in, I'm just going to see if they show up on the store shelves and I'll buy them then. But, um, man, Skylinks looks beautiful. Uh, I want him. Uh, and if I was in Melbourne, I would have stolen this one. Uh, Charles, how do you like Skylinks? Skylinks looks awesome. I mean, right? And so my question for you, Yoshi, is uh, are you okay with the fact that this new Skylinks is not motorized? You bring up some disturbing questions. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know, uh, if, uh, if I was in the market for a G1 Skylinks, I would go get a G1 Skylinks. Uh, but uh, I could definitely see myself instantaneously in the market for this Skylinks if I saw him on my shelf at Target. Does that make sense? Like, I'm, yes. I'm okay he's not motorized, mm-hmm. uh, but I'm not going to pay that hefty fee for an original motorized one. Um, mm-hmm. I like the character. I don't love the character that much. Fair enough. Yes. Good question, though. Daryl? Yes, sir. Are you going to get this just to compare it next to the original? Oh, God, yeah. This thing is yeah. awesome. I love it. Um, I do have the original, and it's uh, it's pretty awesome. You know, my original is motorized. It does work. And I have no problem with uh, this new one not being motorized. Uh, The gimmick of motorized figures is, you know, it's dated. And it doesn't need to be included anymore. It would cost a fortune to motorize these things. So, um, you know, these these uh, commander class figures are going to be expensive enough. I don't need to add on another $30 for it to be motorized. Um, and, uh, you know, most of the stuff, you know, would come with gimmicks. You'd get a battery pack in it already, so they'd have some kind of thing, and you'd have to worry about, you know, do I open it to take the battery out if I don't want to mess with it? Or, you know, the there'd be, you know, there's issues with batteries and stuff. So, but, yeah, uh, I think it's awesome. I think it's great. I like that they uh, talked to NASA and got, you know, NASA's permission to use their logo gave it a, a, a legitimate space shuttle name uh, you know that's a, that's fantastic um yeah i just i think it's it's good good all around um and skylinks was a perfect candidate for a, a commander class figure let me ask you another question because i i tend to follow tech blogs and not toy blogs are are is anybody talking about the coronavirus and the, that resulting in the delay of these figures coming over um not that i've heard of Okay. It's uh, it's definitely it's, it hasn't it hit affects uh, third parties more. Yeah. Most Hasbro stuff is made in Vietnam. Okay. 
Well, epic. How epic is this epic figure? I think it's pretty epic. Uh, I'm actually really excited to add it to my War for Cybertron collection when it comes out. I do really like the modes he has um, going on. I do. There is the one where it's like just him really trimmed down and he has like these scrawny little chicken legs going on. Uh, if I remember correctly, and I just think that's a little goofy, but I do love like the shuttle and everything, and like you said, uh, Daryl, the NASA having the NASA logo is really fun and a cool thing they're able to do. Um, but yeah, I look forward to this figure coming out and getting it and adding it to my collection. Can't wait. Now, Jeremy, I know you've got a son. Is this what you're going to get him? No. Gah. You're heartless. <laughs> I'm not even sure if it's going to be one on by me. It, I'm not sure. I mean, I like it. I'm not sure if I like it $70 worth. Oh, come on. That's an epic deal for $70. Think of all the bot bots I can buy for $70. Ooh, bot bots. <laughs> That's a good point. You hurt my head. All Look, right. The kid's obsessed with bot bots. Charles, you're up. I hope it's not a bot bot problem. <laughs> Well, uh, so we got lots and lots of Earthrise reveals at Toy Fair last week, uh, but they left a couple off, and uh, Previews World decided to show the two more figures, which Hasbro may. I don't know if I don't know if they were if Hasbro was okay with this, but uh, we got two new figures from Previews World. It's Sunstreaker and. Trailbreaker. So these are not surprising because uh, we already had Hoist. So Trailbreaker is, uh, of course, a mold mate with Hoist. So not surprising that we got this figure. Sunstreaker. I think a lot of people were speculating that the um, the Runamuck uh, and Runabout mold was looked like it would could be very easily turned into a Sunstreaker, and looks like it may have been so. We've got those figures now, so uh, I, I'm sure lots of people will be happy with a Sunstreaker to go with their Sideswipe, although this is an Earth mode Sunstreaker to go with a Cybertronian Sideswipe, but that's probably okay since the Cybertronian Sideswipe look pretty much like an Earth Sideswipe. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, uh, these are two classic G1 figures uh, being added to the Earthrise uh, list. Uh, and yeah, if you uh, if you watch the G1 cartoon, these guys figured, uh, you know, Trailbreaker pretty prominently. I think Sunstreaker was only in maybe a couple early episodes. He didn't he wasn't that prominent. But, you know, these these are the the season one cast. So these are the old school guys. Uh, Epic. Uh, is it, Are these guys being added to your War for Cybertron collection, too? Yes. Absolutely. And it's really funny because I, I love how Sunstreaker looks is like perfect. And I actually had been I think I even tried to buy like a KO of the masterpiece uh, of this guy and mm -hmm. it didn't go well. Got ripped off. But oh, yeah. Oh, got scammed. But now now that this is coming out, the, the thing I found with the whole war for Cybertron line is that it actually has like my need to get masterpiece guys because really all it is is that I want them to look like their G1 selves and stuff like this and so when they're coming out with these characters that actually look how they're supposed to I just I don't I all of a sudden I'm excited because now I don't have to spend however much to get that masterpiece I can just get this guy and he's perfect I'm happy about it but yeah I think they're both great I really like them cool yeah these guys are definitely uh several orders of magnitude below the masterpiece price so twenty dollars yeah. versus a hundred and twenty dollars i think that's a that's a good uh, trade-off there yeah totally uh yoshi what do you think of these guys are these are these suitably uh g1 enough for you uh, no <laughs> okay <laughs> care to elaborate <laughs> i you know i, I it's okay, I'm, Yoshi. <laughs> I, I feel like, you know, Hasbro is trying to find that nice mix of nostalgia and being cheap as hell. So, like, yeah, like they're hollow legs. 
the hollow legs drive me nuts. The fact that the tires aren't rubber drives me nuts. And it's like they're trying to disguise the hollowness with way kind of detailed plastic with just needless lines and carvings or whatever the fuck you want to call it. Um, I mean, from straight on, they don't look half bad. But I think once you turn and look at them from any other angle, it, it would it would bother me immensely. I can see that because it is super... It is. It does seem dumb because you like turn them sideways, and then it's like, oh, I can see into your leg and see into your arm. And even sometimes the guns are hollow and stuff. So yeah. I totally can get that for sure. I mean, I'm not. I'm not dissing anybody that wants to get these. I mean, Hasbro seems to realize that the G1 market is there, but and, and I'm sure they're trying to hit a certain price point so that their CEOs don't have to take a pay cut. But it's. I don't know. I, CEOs I, I never take a pay cut. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> so I don't know. I just it's I don't know. It, it's 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 why the fuck I'm okay with Skylinks and not this. I there's no rhyme or reason to it. it it's just I, I don't. <laughs> I'm not okay with this, Charles. Get off my back. <laughs> okay, <laughs> Jeremy. Uh, what do you think of these guys? And I, I like them. I, I don't like the hollow legs, particularly. Sunstreaker's like that. I I hate when they do this, where the the leg is kind of hidden in the open space in the vehicle mode, and then once you expand it out and you just like cover it up with a panel, you still have that big hole there. And it seems like there could be some way to have another panel on the side. I don't know, some way to wrap around so you don't have this big gaping hole there. But the overall mm-hmm. look of the toys I like. The the vehicles I think look spot on. And I don't know. I mean, I think I would probably if I didn't already have two of the siege side swipes, I'd probably get the sun tricker, but I don't know. And I, I like them overall though. You have two siege side swipes? I have a red one and a black one. Ah, okay. Do you, does everyone not? <laughs> <laughs> I have zero siege size wipes, so <laughs> you just, you're beating me. Uh, it sucks to be you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I'm so I, I still need to get the add-on kit to give like the bandolier and stuff for the uh, uh, yeah a, a good G2 side swipe. All right, Daryl, do the gaps bother you too? Uh, a little, but then that's why I I do buy masterpiece stuff. Um, that's because if my masterpiece stuff came with all the gappiness, then I would be really upset. But these are, these are great figures, you know, um, this, and I've talked about it before with regards to other figures, but the alt mode for Sunstreaker is essentially the same alt mode that they gave to, to Siege Sideswipe, but it transforms completely differently. And mm-hmm. that That's kind of engineering you want accuracy. blows my mind and I love it, you know? So, you know, it's just, it's, it's a little bit more hard angles on this one because it's supposed to be earth instead of, you know, Cybertronian modes, but it's the same damn car mode. Right. Um, if I were allowed to add one thing to it is I would have given the alt mode for Sunstreaker a spoiler, um, because it just looks kind of like it just drops off the back there and there's nothing. Um, whereas the G1 uh, version has a little bit more junk in the trunk. Uh, if you want to put it, that, you know, put it street. Uh, uh, no. <laughs> does that, is that not what the kids say anymore? Uh, the kids 30 years ago? <laughs> When oh, you were a kid, <laughs> I'm, I'm hip. I know what's still, going on. He's still a kid at heart. Is showing. Yeah, <laughs> I know what's going on, Charles. But yeah, no, I like it. I think it's great. I like the engineering. It uh, it works. Uh, and yeah, the uh, trail breaker is you know like you said, it's a mold mate, so it works. And um, I I really do. I like the design. The gappiness is a little bit funky, but it works. You know, it works. So. I'm not really going to give it too much. I'm comparing this to the trail breaker that we got in generations, the IDW trail breaker. Right. And I mean, first of all, the figure itself is bigger, 
right? So that's a change, you know, in and of itself. The, the deluxe size point went went up instead of down, and uh, it it just it looks more G one than the previous incarnation. But uh, mm-hmm. yeah, I mean, I'm for it. It's 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 the main line, right? It, you're not going to get, you know, the best of the best of the best out of the main line. It's just going to be it's going to be average. It's going to be good, you know. All right. Well, uh, that's all our toy topics, and we will finish up the toy section with rapid fire toys. Absolutely, positively, definitely, nobody gets job done faster than I can. Nobody, nobody, nobody. All right, and it, with it being the uh, first day of March when we're recording this, that means we're going to do the Toy Hacks February update. And with this update, uh, we got a lot of new stuff, especially for Siege, and starting up. Uh, the Siege updates uh, for labels from Toy Hacks. We've got Astro Train is getting a ton of stuff. That's a big figure. needs a lot of new stickers, uh, and uh, he comes with it. So take a look at that if you're looking for Astro Train. If you've picked up Crosshairs, then take a look at the new set for Crosshairs. Uh, a lot of new details being added to this figure. Finding new ways to differentiate it from the, uh, the, the Ratchet and the... Ironhide mold. Uh, next up is Rat Bad and Rumble. So a couple of these, you know, little tape guys, they add a lot of detail and make them look a lot more like tapes. If uh, if you get the sticker set for these two little dudes, they're fun and I like them. I might pick those up if I can find these damn things. I can't find Rat Bat and Rumble anywhere. Yeah, it's a pain in the butt. So next up is Power Dasher Chromar. Power Dasher figure, so he's got some interesting labels. A lot of people don't really know him from being an early G1 figure. He was a mail away. Yeah, these fi- these uh, labels definitely add some some characterization and some detail to him. So pick that up if you've got him as well. And lastly, from Siege is Hound. And if you've got the, uh, or sorry, this isn't from Siege. This is for MP47 Hound. I got this labeled wrong. A bunch of new labels for him, uh, giving him a lot of new. Uh, detail work, make him look a lot more G1 accurate. Uh, cell shaded windows. All their masterpiece stuff comes with cell shaded windows now. If you're into that, you don't have to use them, but they look they look pretty damn good. In the third party market, uh, Toy Hacks has finished off the label sets for their unique toys Combaticons, and this is the label set for Onslaught Calicos. And he is looking pretty cool. Uh, I, I really like the way that they have uh, have put some um, so the details, giving him details for his Bruticus mode as well. But yeah, it's uh, it looks pretty awesome. And uh, the last piece of the Bruticus or the Combaticons from Unique Toys is Archimond, and that's their brawl. Yeah, he's he's also pretty cool. The uh, they give him a a bunch of uh, like. I, I would say it's not really gold. It's more just a uh, an off green or a bit more of an army green to kind of make it look a little bit more tankish. A cool set that they did this uh, this month was from Cyberverse, and it's for their Gnaw figure. So they did actually two different sets. So if you wanted to get one, it'll give you a a, a Gnaw f- uh, set for make them look a little bit more like um, like a G one Gnaw. Or if you wanted to get the second set, it uh, it kind of changes the colors up a little bit. So if you got a a, fu- uh, a couple of them or a few of them, then uh, then you can have um, you know a bit of a of a gnaw army. I don't know anyone who would do that, but uh, maybe somebody out there likes gnaw enough to buy a bunch of sets. And uh, lastly, uh, we've got new additions to the Toy Hacks Armory. And if you remember, we talked about this before. Toy Hacks has started creating their replacement weapons for their G1 figures. So if you've got G1 figures out there that are missing weapons and you can't find them and you really don't want to spend the aftermarket prices, uh, I know I've been there. Uh, Some weapons just cost an arm and a leg. So what they've done is they're starting to 3D print uh, replica weapons and uh, it really does help on the budget. So the first weapon they're adding this month is for G1 Gnaw and it's it's a gun. Um... It's uh, for Gnaw, it's definitely not the most, uh, you know, valuable piece of, of that figure. The the mace or the tail is uh, pretty hard to come by and, and very expensive. So if you if they want to add that, I won't uh, I won't be upset. Next up, they add the gun for G1 Rekgar. And uh, that's also a pretty cool weapon to have. And 
yeah, it's usually pretty, it's pretty hard to find. I think uh, if they could reprint uh, or print off rubber tires to go around that, uh, that second wheel, uh, just to have the, uh, the rubber is, is pretty hard to find. Um, and then grapple grapples gun is the third piece that they're adding to the armory for this month. Um, grapples gun is, uh, it's the same as infernos. So you can use it for either one. So, um, but yeah, the armory is a pretty cool thing that they've just started to do over at toy hacks. And, uh, and I really like to see them develop this uh, a little bit more and, and can't wait to see how, how vast it gets because a lot of these uh, G1 accessories are really starting to become hard to get. And uh, uh, being 30, 35 years old, it's, uh, you know, they're not getting any easier to find. But that's it. That's it for uh, Rapid Fire Toys. And uh, throw it back to you, Charles. All right. Tom B. Long has lots of new choices to pick from with his Toy Hacks $10 gift code that he won this week. So, mm-hmm. All right. Uh, we will move on to some trips to the store. This is where we show off all the awesome Transformers merchandise we got this week. We do this as a YouTube video so you can see everything we got in beautiful high definition. But we'll keep the audio right here in the podcast so you can keep listening and hear it as we describe everything in loving detail. So without further ado, trips to the store. The Transmissions Podcast will return after these messages. So uh, let's start off with Yoshi. I'm going to go to you. You Sure. This is your first show of 2020. So uh, I'm sure you've got lots of Christmas presents to show off, right? Transformers Christmas presents? Yeah? Yeah? No. Uh-uh. Oh. Well. I actually, uh, I got my kid Transformers. Um, but after Christmas, yesterday, or the day before yesterday, I found what is claimed to be the world's smallest Transformers action figure. Oh. And the glare is phenomenal. <laughs> so apparently he comes out of his uh, pack and he's got a little stand. So he stands up. I don't think he actually uh, transforms. I don't know if he's the smallest, but yeah. no, he does not transform. There is a Bumblebee and a Starscream version I have not located. Uh, and this thing caught me completely unawares. I didn't know it was coming out. I'm sure Daryl did, but I didn't. Why, we talked why about is it, on the it show. in that huge packaging? That's just... That brand. So you could read the name of the company that fucking put and it so out. And so you can really see how small it is. Yeah. <laughs> so you can't there's, steal it. <laughs> there's a, they do a whole series of these. I mean, there's, they've done Hot Wheels. They've done G.I. Joe's. They've done a bunch of fucking figures. Um, but this was pretty neat, and I insta buyed it. So. Yeah, it's super awesome. It shouldn't be confused with the actual World's Smallest Transformers line from the early yeah. 2000s. That did transform. Those do transform, right? Oh, yeah. 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 I wondered that. And then the Soundwave one comes with a Ravage that's even tinier that does transform. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. Yeah. I've shown it off on the show before. Does it go into Soundwave? Oh, yeah. Yes. I feel too <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. Like, it is, like, literally, like, smaller than a, a fingernail. Holy cow. <laughs> And you've lost it. That's why you're not showing it, which makes sense. It, it, it got vacuumed up. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. <laughs> That's all I got, Charles. All right, uh, Jeremy, what do you got? A Ravage, uh, apparently, and it's like wee small. <laughs> I have a few things. Um, since we didn't do trips to the store last week, I didn't have some. The, I didn't show off some comics. I got uh, Transformers number 17, uh, Livio cover, I believe. I got the Sarah Petra Jorge retail incentive cover of the Valentine's Day special. Cosmos. Yoshi's Boy Cosmos. Transformer wise, I got a toy that Daryl wouldn't let me show off last week. <laughs> <laughs> I got Ironworks, and I have him in his kind of base mode here, but this is like extreme parts former, but it it's awesome how it works with just the the different ramp pieces. I don't know. I just, I love this guy. There's so many different fan modes I've seen online with this thing, with like people just getting a bunch of them and like building these massive structures and stuff. And oops, it does come apart easy, but it's broken. I don't know. It's, it's really fun. Yeah. Ironworks is a win. I, I want to get more of um, these little bases, like the airwave that we talked about at Toy Fair and Grease Pit. 
grease bit. Yeah. This is not Transformers, but I think it's too awesome to show off. Um, I got this at C2E2. I'll take it out of the case so it won't be so glary. This is a um, Batman wow. print I got from Claudio Castanelli. Um, he's an Italian artist that lives in Spain, and he did he did work for DC. He did a book with Marv Wolfman that I I got that came out last year, and I just think this Batman is just awesome. So, so that's all I got right now. I, I have something else I got at C2E2, but I didn't bring it up with me. So, uh, Jeremy, can I ask you a question? Yeah. Why is the comic book behind you crooked? <laughs> <laughs> because the little 3M sticky thing is coming out. Oh, you better fix that or else it'll <laughs> fall and get wrecked. It, yeah, it's been crooked for a couple of weeks. <laughs> <laughs> so why didn't you notice earlier, Daryl? Oh, I've noticed the entire time. I've been waiting. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, Epic, uh, since you're new to the show, uh, you can pick anything from your collection that you'd like to show off. whatever. Oh. You, or if you got something recently, too. I, I did actually go to the store recently, uh, dollar store, so it's not that exciting. But the dollar store was selling the little, little minifigure guys. So I oh, went nice. and collected all six of the guys that they had available going oh, on. Oh, cool. So you've got, let's see, we got Optimus here. And I'm sorry, this is very tiny. So a little Optimus, <laughs> little Bumblebee. And then Grimlock is the only one who's in his alt mode because obviously a dinosaur is cooler if you can have that option. Then they had a Megatron, a Starscream, and then Soundwave, uh, who they put his cannon on the wrong shoulder so okay um the other thing i picked up my second thing was a fun little sticker pack actually i was super excited to see and it's got all sorts of different of the wind blade and uh bumblebee and stuff like that grimlock optimus but what i'm most excited about is that i got my shipment in of the transformers transformers train card game um Soundwave oh. Burst Blaster Pack, and the glare is there. There we go. Oh, that's cool. But, yeah, so mm-hmm. I've fallen behind on my collection on that, and so I'm trying to get back into it, and this I had to have, Soundwave. So went and got that. So that's my trip to the store. Very cool. Are you? A, are, do you play the trading card game, or are you just collecting the cards? I was in the beginning playing it and stuff but i've been too busy lately to keep up with playing it and everything so at the Mm -hmm. moment it's more like i'm just trying to keep up on the collection of it but then always have plans to play it at some point again nice yeah there will be opportunities at tf oh yeah all right uh i'll go next um i've got a lot of things similar to what jeremy had i've got comics transformers galaxies number four i've got uh, Transformers number 17. And uh, from Livio Remindelli, a friend of the show, The Kill Lock number three. It's not Transformers, but uh, it's his creator owned comic about robots. So it's Transformers adjacent. He's a well known Transformers artist. So it's really a fucking good story so far. Yeah. And this is issue three. There's three more issues after this. So it's cool. And uh, I did want to uh, show off, the. this is a toy I got back at TFCon 2019. This is finally Alicon. <laughs> uh, so we have the, Al- the official Alicons were just announced at Toy Fair last week. Uh, so I had to open this one up just to play around with it to see how it compared. I think this guy looks much more like the movie uh alicon from transformers the movie but uh he's also very spiky like uh i would not give this toy to a kid (laughs) to play with because they would they would hit their eye out or something like these 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 things are very (laughs) sharp uh there's spikes all over this guy and yeah i'm afraid to play with it myself it's uh, it's very spiky but it is a it is a cool figure, very well articulated. Does look very much like the movie version. Uh, I think I am going to get the the official Alicon just to compare it, but I think this guy's uh, alligator mode is much better than the official Alicon. But but he's more dangerous. He's spikier. <laughs> so 
Yeah, that's what I got. All right, Daryl, you're up. All right. Um, I do have a couple comics as well. This is uh, Transformer 17. This is the other cover. I don't remember who did this one. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's the Megatron yellow is cover. That Casey? Brendan uh, Cahill. Nope. Brendan Cahill, I think. Oh, is it Brendan? Okay. Um, and then I got uh, Galaxies number four. This is uh, Sarah Peter de Rocher's cover. Um, this one's pretty awesome. Um, yeah, so I got those. Uh, as far as figures this week, uh, I got a bunch of stuff. Uh, I spent a lot of money this week, so I'm actually spending, uh, sparsing it out over a couple shows because, um, it, I, I spent like $250 this week on stuff. So it's, it's got to last me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is uh, scavenger. This is part of devastator. This is one of the two leader figures. He's massive. Um, and I'm not opening these guys until I get all eight of them. So, um, so this guy will stay like this and maybe forever if I never find all the rest of them. Um, so yeah, but, uh, yeah, he's cool. He's big. And, uh, I was remember, remember being at uh, fan expo last year when they announced this guy. So that's kind of bitter, like kind of awesome that I've, I've seen the, the full, the full loop on him next up while I was buying him, I saw this one. This is Soundwave, Studio Series Soundwave number 51. Uh, this guy makes a really awesome uh, Mercedes-Benz uh, SL, uh, I think it's an SL500 or something like that. It's an AMG uh, version of the car, so it's uh, it's a pretty cool car. Um, the, car the, the robot mode looks awesome too, so I'm pretty, uh, pretty hyped for that. Um, so yeah, I bought this one. I have the... Um, it was a it was a harder to find Dark of the Moon uh, version of Soundwave, so uh, I do have that one. It's still sealed. It's just on my wall here. So, but uh, yeah, this one I'll I'll open up and mess around with, seeing it's a little bit more uh, easier to get ac- access to. Uh, it does have a, a laser beak in there as well. Uh, can't really see him, but he's just on the side there. So there's a little laser beak in there too. But yeah, this guy looks really awesome, and I'm looking forward to messing with him. Um, I found a bunch of Earthrise this week, so that's what I'm really kind of just sparsing out. Uh, first up was Deluxe Cliff Jumper. Uh, he's he's awesome. I really like this guy. Uh, he's he's really well articulated. A, he's got a bunch of angles and and are you know joints in his knees and his legs, full on knee or ankle tilts. Um, he he does have a backpack that comes off. So you're actually getting a very similar kind of a feel to what the uh, the RC is going to be like. Although this one pegs in on the back and can kind of basically disappear, but it is it's full on parts for me. So um, yeah, that's uh, that's something there. But the gun itself, this big cannon, is from an episode, you know. But it does break apart, so you get the um, two little miniature, you know, personal like well, single handed guns. Then these little like stands for his, you know, giant, you know, cannon, they'll actually come off and they become the skis that'll go in onto it underneath his tires for his alt mode. And then you got this black piece at the back, which I only, you know, I opened it today, so I don't really know what it turns into, but it's, it does do something. So that's kind of neat too. So I really like this guy. Cliff Jumper is pretty awesome. Um, and uh, the other one I got this week uh, for you is uh, Hoist. So, nice. So yeah, so Hoist, he's enormous by comparison. These are both deluxes. And, oh, uh, wow. Wow. They're, they're a big difference, huh. right? Wow. So Hoist comes with, like, no accessories whatsoever, except for this little, like, cone on his hand, mm. which, uh, I mean, he had in, in, you know, the cartoon, he only had, you know, the one hand anyway, right? So... You just kind of put this on there. You have to take it off for transformation, so that's why you kind of leave it. But, uh, but yeah, he's uh, he he's got a lot going on here as well. But yeah, as far as our uh, accessories go, there's really nothing here. the 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 thing that kind of I thought was interesting is on his back, he's got the same kind of thing that his G1 uh, counterpart had was the little ramp or the the tow truck mode thing. But if you look on there, it's actually got the hooks for the ramps. So they're really they're really leaning into this this uh, ramp thing. So um, I don't know how you're going to hook a 
or how how you're really going to make that play pattern of a of a you know a tow truck hooking into uh, of a, a road or a ramp. But well, you can it's make there. it longer it's so it can carry a bigger car. Maybe, yeah, sure. You know, so that's kind of neat. But uh, it just tucks away on on his back, and and uh, yeah, the uh, the transformation for this guy was pretty easy. Nothing really really too too upsetting on there. Uh, the back of his legs are fully gap gappy, but he does have ankle tilts built into his legs, right? So um, Lisa has so that. So that's there. Yeah, I mean, it's it's something, but uh, yeah, I I mean, for the size of this figure, uh, I'm I'm impressed. Uh, this is deluxe, right? So this is crazy. This is this is like at least I don't know what's American measurements, at least an inch bigger than the the last one so yeah i fully recommend the hoist mold but yeah that's it that's what i got for a show this this week all right well that'll do it for trips to the store this week we now return to the transmissions podcast all right we're back from our trips to the store and let's move on with convention news all right, uh, only one thing this week they have announced that the Shizuka Hobby Show 2020 in Japan has been canceled uh, due to the the coronavirus. Um, the Japanese government has put in new regulations for meetings and conventions in order to reduce the impact. So I'm sure Takari was going or Takara was going to have a, a big display of all the upcoming figures. So I'm sure they'll release the images somewhere else or or something. You know, it's just another, like, a number of, of other conventions in, like, the tech sector and stuff have been canceled because of this. So, this is, like, one of the first big toy ones. That is it for convention news this week. All right, and we will finish up the show with feedback. That's right, Charles. And if you guys would like to leave us feedback, head on over to transmissionspodcast.com slash feedback. There you can leave us a MySpace or a, a Google Plus message. Let us know what you think uh, of the show. Uh, Yoshi, both yes. both of those sites are not existent anymore. <laughs> Son of a bitch. When's the last time I was on? <laughs> what are we using now? Friendster? Uh, <laughs> we'll talk off mic, right. Yoshi. <laughs> okay, we'll get you up that. to speed. <laughs> Until then, somebody will post my P.O. box just, somewhere to get questions just keep, sent in. keep up with your PS2 um, community. <laughs> <laughs> Says the guy who doesn't own a PS2. I do own a PS2. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to YouTube, where we have a message from Paolo, who writes, The podcast is cool. Paolo, you're off to a great start. I think you should stop there. Uh, but he continues, but at least you guys could upload photos of the things you guys are talking about. Like, this is really hard to enjoy. I, I assume what he's saying is it's really hard to enjoy what we're talking about when we don't show slides or anything of what we're what we're talking about on the podcast. Uh, Jeremy? Podcasting is hard. Yeah, <laughs> I think we've got a volunteer to do that, if, is what it sounds like. Well, <laughs> if... if you were a Donatrion and could listen to our live recordings uh, like a number of people do. You would understand, the, like particularly tonight, the number of technical issues we've had. There's no we in you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I've actually been, um, I didn't tonight, but in the recent weeks, I've been like playing with doing this as, as we're talking, not, not like doing it live, but I've been like, as we've, as we've been going, I've been like recording a video with showing the, like browser windows and stuff. It is hard to to do that and to also talk. And I'm sure a lot of times when you see it on YouTube, it's either all done in post, which means time that I don't have, or they have people that help do it live. So it's just it's hard. It, it's something we want to get to, but our, our it's a time consuming extra. Yeah, our, our primary audience is audio podcasting. So, you know, we, we appreciate you listening on YouTube, but we, yeah, we upload the stuff to YouTube, but our primary, uh, our primary mode of distribution is the audio podcast. And our website does have links to all the things we talk about in our show notes. So yeah. Yeah. We do have our, extensive show notes. Yeah. If you, if you go to our website but, and look it up there. But Jeremy, if a, if a Paolo or somebody else wants to volunteer, kind of like Mike does, 
Are we open to that? I mean, we're open to talk, but it's a time-consuming process, so we, we would need to work it out. So, yeah, I mean, I, I'm open to anyone that wants to help. So if, if that's something you as a listener are interested in, send an email to Daryl at transmissionspodcast.com, and we'll, uh, we'll forward that to the right people. <laughs> yeah. Jeremy, it also sounds like we've got a voicemail from Cashy. Yeah, we do. What the hell? G'day, Transmissions. Cashy here. Long-time listener, first-time caller. Um, I'd like to address the ugliness of last week's Windblade model kit controversy. Um, first of all, after listening to both uh, you guys and Moonbase 2 this week, uh, I'd like to note that I've only heard commentary from dudes. There haven't been any women at all. I can't speak to any of the other podcasts, but there has not been a single female voice addressing this. Um I think I would like to hear more women on transmissions, um, especially in regard to this, because most of the objections about um, this sexualized figure or the unrealistic female body image that, um, yeah, most of those complaints have been from women. Um, Secondly, as far as I'm aware, um, this online harassment campaign that was taken up, um, it was led by someone from outside the fandom. Um, So this... I guess, YouTube-based uh, outrage machine seemed to have take up with women expressing an opinion. I did see a bit more of it uh, even last night. Um, and it mostly came from outside the fandom. And I don't think enough attention was paid to that. It was extremely worrying that this happened. Last, lastly, least importantly, is my opinion. Um, to paraphrase, paraphrase the movie Hot Fuzz, it's not really in keeping with the other kids, model kits' rustic aesthetic. Perhaps Flame Toys meant this to be controversial. I, it, this one doesn't fit in, uh, as I was saying earlier. Anyway, I love the Transformers fandom's inclusiveness. I'd really like to... Um, yeah, basically, I, I'm sure there's plenty of female fans out there that um, are going to comment on this, and their voices are more important than mine. Uh, one thing I want to say is just this kind of harassment is deeply troubling and I don't want to see it continue in the Transformers fandom. All right. Thanks. Bye. All right, Cashy. Thanks for your uh, comments. Um, now, Epic, you're a woman. Sure am. Do you feel uh, Do you feel like you're in a position to comment on this? Uh, yeah. I've actually thought a lot about it. Um, I do feel like, uh, in a way, though, my opinion might be dismissed or overlooked on this uh subject though because since i am a nude model it seems like well i'm already for this type of uh sexualization and stuff but really i'm i'm actually quite uh conservative i grew up conservative and i'm currently married and all this stuff and i just i have no problem with it honestly i i really love the figure and find her beautiful and i i don't I don't really understand why there seems to be this thought that a woman needs either like very sexy, but yet like maybe bimboish or something. But then on the other side, you have a smart and cunning woman. But I don't understand what is wrong with having those two overlap. Because to me, when I was a little girl, I like loved, 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 loved Greece from or Sandy from Greece. And I didn't love good Sandy. I loved when she came out in her black leather pants and her cool hair all done and stuff. And I loved it so much that I went out and had my mom buy me a pair of black leather pants because I just thought it was the coolest thing ever. And so I just, as a young girl, I remember looking up to strong, sexy female characters. And I don't feel like it had any negative impact on me. I thought it was really cool that you could be super beautiful but yet be strong smart and independent and all that stuff and um so that would be like my first point on it i don't know uh if you guys have anything to say to that i don't know i don't i don't actually know any of your guys' thoughts on this figure i mean we we talked a little bit about it last week uh just uh from my point of view uh for me personally uh, it's uh the design was not something that I that uh, that I was interested in, but mm-hmm. I was fine. You know, I'm fine with the figure. You know, for people who like that figure and who like the design, that's fine. Yeah. What w- what I had issue with was it felt like it was a little bit of a double standard where, 
like none of the male transformer figures are ever like super sexualized like that and like I don't know that I would agree with that though because like the IDW comics and stuff some of their drawings and characterization of the male transformers I think they're like super cool dude looking and like I I don't necessarily get off on like how the dude looks it's always more the personality so the personalities they put into these male characters along with how they're drawn I end up finding that attractive and stuff so in a way they do sexualize the male characters okay i mean that's that's so, definitely something that that uh never uh like struck me when i when mm-hmm. i look at any of the characters in in the idw line but uh, uh, fair enough yeah. it's uh it's uh it's definitely the the thing is is i mean most girls it's not like we're attracted to junk genitalia of sort <laughs> it's like it's really it's really the generally Obviously, how a guy looks helps and stuff, but personality does play a big role Mm -hmm. in what appeals to us. And so the way they write these characters and they got like the big broad chest and the uh, slim down waist and, you know, stuff like that. They do make them look, at least in my, like to me, to me, I feel like they service women as much as they service men. And they actually in this, it's funny because this uh, fandom is mostly male dominated So it makes complete sense to me that they would want to market a character or, you know, have the feminine characters. Because I have a few points about this. So, like, when I looked at the the model kit for the first time when I saw it, I didn't know there was all necessarily all this, like, outrage about it. But I just, like, I just saw a woman. It To me, that body looks... uh, very similar to some girls I know and stuff like it just it's it has boobs and butts and I I don't know like why we have such a hard time like accepting female anatomy how else would you make a character look feminine versus looking masculine because you do want a difference and un- I guess unfortunately the assets that make a woman stand b- apart are her boobs and her butt and so I would expect to see that or some indication of it on a character. And I I did also pull up some IDW comic covers of Windblade. And from what I saw, this Flame Toys uh, kit isn't that far off from uh, what th- some of those covers make her look like. Like, to me, it's just another stylized version of Windblade because that is what it is. It's a stylized model kit. And I don't know that all this um, outrage around it. I mean, I totally get that it's, sometimes, it's not some people's things. That, that I'm fine with. Mm-hmm. Um, but where I do, I do start to have a problem with is like the like aggression around it. Because in my last interview I had with Daryl, uh, we talked about like, did I ever feel any pushback from the community? And the answer, my answer was no. Uh, I have never have. I've always felt very welcomed and stuff. But now this is kind of a weird spot where I don't actually feel that accepted, but not because I'm a woman, but because I like this toy. Like, all of a sudden, you see people online saying, if you support this toy, you're not a true Transformers fan, or you're, like, you know, you're just kind of a bad person for liking it's it. Just, and It's the binariness of society where if you don't agree with me, then every opinion you have is invalid. Right. And I I wish we could get away from that because you're allowed to disagree with people. I I wish that we could get to a point where it's like I disagree and it's like, all right, that's cool. That's fine. I I like it. My view of the figure is it's a very stylized, typical anime looking figure. And my biggest my biggest issue with the figure is that it's not windblade enough. Like, you know, the the wings aren't prominent enough. I did. That's I did my look in, into that, and since it's a stylized version, I know they left the wings off, but it's supposed to just be her bow. It's like supposed to represent her geisha bow and stuff more, so that's why they like right. opted to leave the wings off. Right, and and there is like that that is a Japanese style of figure, mm-hmm. and yeah. you know it's just it's not for me, and that's fine. It's, it's for other people that like it. Yeah, totally, mm-hmm. totally, and. The other thing I'd like to just point out is, like, I think as fans, our opinions are all equal. 
I don't necessarily care for the idea that because this is a woman character, all of a sudden my opinion because I'm a woman matters more. I think I wish we could all just view ourselves as we're fans. We are fans of this. We're in this together. And we should all have a say. And you can say if you don't like it and whatever. And if you like it or you don't like it. Um, but what really puts me off is the idea that because you don't like it, you now want it canceled and you're going to keep me from being able to get it. I don't like the call to have it canceled because I feel like if there's enough people in the fandom who dislike something, like it completely goes against what the fandom loves, then it would make sense that the fans would not buy it. It would not be bought. It would not get supported. And then they would know, the companies would know, hey, this didn't work and we should change how we decide to sell our stuff or how we design things but instead we're people are calling to have it canceled and i i disagree with that mentality i don't think it's fair that because you don't like something you're going to keep me from being able to enjoy it when in the end it's just a figure on my shelf it doesn't actually affect you Mm -hmm. that makes sense i think all all of that is is totally uh reasonable and correct and I agree with everything you're saying there. The other problem I see, though, is we also have the backlash to the backlash, where on the other side, the people who are angry about people complaining about that figure then want to hit back. And then, you know, it looks it escalates to some harassment and, you know, sending death threats and things like that. And that's mm-hmm. that goes, you know, way over the line as well. So. I think yeah, that- I mean, certainly a Transformer model kit is... <laughs> nothing's ever okay to send a death threat over yeah. or be insulting about and stuff, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, I I do think everyone on both sides is a little sensitive, though, because I feel like we're, for some reason... I, I There is a line between me critiquing why you hate something versus me harassing you for hating something. And so I do think that line gets blurred sometimes. I certainly know that there was harassment that happened and everything, Mm -hmm. but I do, I do wish we could acknowledge that if you disagree with something and I want to ask you why and stuff, we should be able to have a discussion about it and not turn into harassment and yelling at each other and stuff. I do think that's very sad and unfortunate that it came to the, that it got to where it was, but I feel like, what really started it, I feel like, was people got really defensive at the idea that people were trying to have it canceled. Like, why? It goes, it comes back to that point of why are you trying to cancel a thing if you don't like it, don't buy it. And, you know, I just, I really believe in that companies should be able to make things if people don't buy it, then that sucks for them and they'll learn their lesson, you know. Um, also, it is from a, it is from a different market, too. And um, I don't know. I just I I do really like the figure and I think it's kind of silly that we try to pretend like guys aren't attracted to a feminine shape. You know, I mean, sure, there's going to be people, dudes who don't want this figure for whatever reason and stuff. But at the end of the day, it is a male dominated fandom and it makes sense that they would put out it's because this is for adults too. this model kit is for adults. They're trying to target for the most part adult males so to have it be a feminine character or a feminine shape makes complete sense to me and i think like i said i think it's gorgeous and like for that reason i want it i look at it i think it's awesome but on the other hand it's reasons why i don't want like the victorian or strong arm figure because those to me i don't think they're actually that cool and they're just like they're supposed to be or they're girl transformers, but I look at them and I'm like, I, I personally am like, I wish you were more feminine because I just otherwise you just look like any um, re- regular bot, I guess you could say. So I don't know. I to me, it is a fantasy world where fantasy characters. I like the the artist can express themselves. I think it's a form of art. It is a. Uh, a stylized version of the character. And I, like I said, I personally really love it. I really do think it's cool. And I totally get why maybe other people wouldn't. Um, I just would say don't buy it. 
I think, uh, well, I mean, I commented last week, but uh, um, I think my thoughts are are, are pretty close to uh, Epic's. Uh, mine were more based on the uh, the figures coming from a different market. And uh, it's, uh, you know, don't think about it. Uh, try not to think about it with your uh, uh, your culture's sensibilities, right? It's Well, I mean, too, she... She is a geisha, and it is from the Japanese culture, and so she is generally a more sexualized person, being a geisha and stuff. Mm-hmm. I don't. My other point would be too is that this isn't the only f- figure that exists of this character too. That's that's what's so great about this world is that we have so many options for other third party people to come in and make figures that people want and care about. That's why I really believe the just don't get it mentality Mm -hmm. well epic thank you very much i i I really appreciate your point of view on this Um, yeah and if anybody else male or other want to leave us a voicemail and follow up please do male or other (laughs) 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 well charles why why do you have to bring us down (laughs) well do you have thoughts on it you know, I don't want to. I don't want to sound like a broken record. What what you're saying sounds a lot like you know you hate censorship, and I I truly hate censorship. And you let the dollar decide. Uh, yeah. I I don't. You, I had I had a conversation a, a short one with the guys uh, on Discord about this about like what started this because I didn't understand where it started from mm-hmm. and what was the context in which it started because to say. You know, I I don't like this, and I'm gonna set up a petition. It, does anybody agree with me? Is one way to do it in another way that it's just begging for uh, for a, an outlash from the online community. Right, is, you know, it's a whole nother thing. And based on what I was able to find, I still can't put a, a note on how that started. Mm-hmm. But I mean, I I don't think it even got to the point of a, any petition or anything. I think people were just complaining loudly on twitter i don't think anyone led a campaign yeah, to get it taken to, down or i anything complain like that. on twitter too and the world doesn't come down my throat so the question well is, to me the question is how was the complaining conducted i mean it's one thing to say golly this sucks mm-hmm. you know i also and, oh sorry no i i, I go off on several different <laughs> to interrupt. i just I, it's, I was just it's gonna... since Oh, sorry. <laughs> do it. You go. You go. I, I just, I have a problem too where it seems to be a very common, I, I'm kind of passionate about this because I do love my ladies sexy. I love having strong, sexy female character leads that I've, like like I said, since I was a kid, I've looked up to. And lately, it's like we're twins. <laughs> lately, it's been, they've just been, keep being removed from everything right video games and stuff and now transformers and it's kind of frustrating because it it kind of makes me feel like well there are people i almost have like this body type i got the boobs and the butt but somehow i'm not okay my body type is not okay it's sexual and i it really frustrates me because what is wrong with beautiful women and stuff and so these especially over toys but what bothers me is that when someone makes when an artist creates this all of a sudden they're somehow misogynist or sexist and i i just don't see why those two are linked like that because instead i view it as the artist sees the beauty behind it and wants to just show show the beauty of the person their character they're making i i just that, so that name calling that comes with it usually in these situations where the person, uh, where they may say that the creator of this was misogynist and, you know, it's like, to me, that that's not okay either. You shouldn't just label someone something just because you're upset about how they depicted a character that they obviously are passionate about and care about. So it goes both ways, both sides. You know, we shouldn't just be calling each other names just because we're mad about stuff. We, we're adults. We should be able to have discussions and actually talk about what are your concerns and are they valid. But is that going to – having that discussion, I don't see how that's going to appease the people who are, you know, quote-unquote offended by 
these type of figures or this type of art. No, I know, but a discussion is more beneficial than just yelling at each other and just like death threatening. Yeah, I mean, I don't exactly think that dis- like I, yeah, I don't <laughs> in these situations a discussion's not going to matter cuz the company's going to do what they're going to do, you know, but I just mean like if you say you hate it because it sexualizes women, but then I come through and say, I don't think it does, but then you're going to tell me that I'm... Uh, Your opinion cra- doesn't count. Yeah, my opinion doesn't count. It's like, well, why? Because it's the wrong one? Like, that's that's where it bothers me, because I don't get why the one opinion is, you know, the one opinion is absolutely right, and the other one, you're just a crappy person, you know? Mm-hmm. I That... And that's, this is, I I had a debate about if I should post that I wanted to buy this figure because I, I don't know, I don't like necessarily getting involved in drama and all this stuff, but I felt it was important that I voice that I do think this figure is fine. I think she's really cool. And once you see her painted too, like when you see her not painted, everything really stands out and stuff, right? But when it's, when I saw like someone did a painted version of it, it really comes together very well. Yeah, I, you know, it's... Fuck, where do I start? Okay, censorship. It's bad. I don't like it. I don't think they should censor it. Mm-hmm. You know, I could see I could see the argument being made for, you know, a future TF con, uh, which is, I believe, a family convention. Like, uh, how... Because these figures will be there. Like, okay, how do we keep the, the under-14s from looking at it? Or, or what should they do, if anything, to prevent... To just be like, well, it's a behind-the-shelf item. If you want to look at it before you buy it, you ask so and so. I mean, uh, let's like, I, to, I, to be clear, this is not anything. This is not this is not porn level of the figure is not like no. It's just a girl body. Yeah, it's not a it's not a crazy. I mean, my what I uh, what I, where I make the distinction is that uh, like when I look at the like the other IDW figures, they're more they look more like what they look like in the comics and. For me, for me personally, it just doesn't look like what Windblade looked like in the comics, and like I feel like uh, um, you know if, if I, that's what, that was what that would be the design that I was looking for. But I think it's fine to make that design, and pe- if people want to buy it, they can buy it. Uh, but and but I also think it's fine to complain about it. If you don't like it, you can say you don't like it. I mean, I think it's fine to say that you don't like it, but it's then not okay to. St- T- say that people who do like it are sexist or whatever i don't think yeah, that that is okay yeah that's uh, and totally agree with you there i mean i think uh, uh people can like what they like and i think it's fine to like this as well i mean and so the what yeah what i think is a problem is when we're, we get to the point where we can't just say whether we like or don't like it but we have to say yeah you're you're evil for liking this or you're evil for uh, for not liking this and not wanting to get it. And and I think that's and then to the point where, you know, you're you're saying this, you know, I'm I'm judging your entire being based on whether you like or don't like this toy or this model. So, yeah. And I could imagine somebody saying that online would result in a huge firestorm. Right. Like, okay, you don't like it. Don't tell me what my opinion should be. Yes. In the end, I just I just really think people should just view it like, well, this is just isn't for me. And go ahead. You can say that. You can say it's not for you. But I don't think it's then fair to label people who do like it and try to, like, put them down for liking something just because you don't. That's that's really my thoughts like, like on Like Charles it. did earlier when I liked Outlander. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just said my mom liked it too, Yoshi. I, didn't, I wasn't putting you down. I'm not putting my mom down. Okay. She likes it. <laughs> we're, we're still friends. It's okay. <laughs> I, think, I, I think we can close this discussion and move on. All right. Okay. Thank, you. <laughs> Thank you so much, Epic. I think, uh, I think your opinion really meant a lot, and it, it did mean a lot. And fuck, I can't do it. I just can't fucking say anything tonight. <laughs> Yeah, no problem. Thank you. Thank you, Epic, for commenting on that. I really appreciate it. We all appreciate it. So next we'll go to email where uh, Matt wrote in, love the podcast, keep up the good work. We will, Matt. <laughs> we absolutely will. Thank you for your email. We really appreciate it. It uh, it strengthens our mana and keeps us going. <laughs> 
We don't get a lot of emails, so when, when, when one gets sent in, I think we should acknowledge them. <laughs> it's like a fucking Google Plus message. It just never happens anymore. <laughs> and that's it for feedback, Charles. All right, and uh, that will do it for this episode of Transmissions. Uh, Epic, thank you for joining us uh, this week. And uh, if you want to give us uh, any uh, plugs, links, this is your time to uh, to tell everyone where they should go to check out your stuff, and we'll put links in the show notes so everyone can find it. All right. Uh, yeah, uh, you can check me out at epicsuicide.com. All my links are available there. Awesome. And that's E-P-Y-K, suicide. And we will definitely put that in the show notes as well. So if uh, uh, anyone has trouble finding it, they should just go there. Thank you. No problem. All right. So that will do it for Transmissions. Thanks, everyone, for listening. And we will see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Later. Hey, everyone. Thanks for listening to this episode of Transmissions. But just because this episode is over doesn't mean the Transformers fun has to stop. Join us and other Transformers fans on our Discord chat server by visiting transmissionspodcast.com slash Discord. If you would like to learn more about how you could support the Transmissions Podcast, just visit transmissionspodcast.com slash support. Thank you all for listening, and we'll see you again next week. Well, I'm recording. I just, my, the window was like under something else. So I was like thinking I got it when I changed it. it it'll be fine. Michael love it. <laughs> I'm just going to say gross. Are you eating? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it sounded like you were eating something. <laughs> Are you eating your Skylinks? <laughs> yes, I got a Skylinks and I'm eating it. <laughs> God, only a doctor. <laughs> Charles, you're going to need a smaller chair, dude. Remember when he got that chair? It's a regular sized chair. <laughs> well, you're now smaller than a regular person. <laughs> okay. Out in the boonies. It's almost Canadian. Not that far out in the boonies. <laughs> <laughs>